I brought an object. The object that shouldn't be here. <laughs> but it's, well, not specifically here. Don't get worried like that. <laughs> that should be three to nine thousand feet underground. That's a piece of Marcella's shit. And I didn't, I got it from a quarry in Bald Eagle State Park, which probably shouldn't have happened. <laughs> um, not the fact that I got it, but the fact that it was a quarry. Um, and for me, the, the, the shale, I don't know, it, it's kind of hard to get. <laughs> so you're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's Shell. Shell. Shell, right. That's Marcella Shell right there. I don't know if it's still got any natural gas in it or not. But right somebody save it. <laughs> um Right, so that should be in the ground. Um and for me it's kind of emblematic. I don't know how much everybody knows about going for natural gas in Marcellus Shale, um, but um, my own personal trajectory kind of, I've always been interested in plants and things since I grew up, you know, even when I grew up in the city, and I actually, when I was like in seventh grade, I thought that all the plants in the field guide had gone extinct, because I didn't see them anywhere. I was like, oh, that's a damn shame, there's no partridge berries anymore. Um, but that's not really true. They just aren't inside the beltway. Um, <laughs> um, but I did find like choke cherries in the unmowed corner of my athletic field and in middle school, and I was really quite excited to find some cattails um, in between, like in a ditch next to the metro tracks, um, in between the parking lot and the metro tracks, and things like that. Excited when I was a kid. Um, so I kind of studied that stuff, and I was had an affinity for it. Um, and um, that kind of prepared me to understand a little bit more about um, <coughs> fast forward many years to being here. And um, so I guess I'll, I'll stop along the way first. Um, moving to Pittsburgh for me was was a real eye opener because um, I didn't know what it looked like to live in a landscape where extraction and industries um, happen. So um, I got here and I saw it, and part of my job um, was to go around into different um, rural areas and kind of take stock of plants and animals there um, and try to encourage people to take care of them. And um, I saw the damage from acid mine drainage, and I saw the damage from strip mining, and I was like, shit, really? I thought this only happened in Kentucky like 70 years ago. No way, man. Um, it's, it's just like miles and miles of orange streams and strange barren land moonscapes that things don't work normally on and never will. Um, so I saw all that stuff and I thought, man, I, I can't, I can't leave here. And I saw Pittsburgh itself, which like, you know, um, I visited East Germany, like, I don't know, 2003 or something. And Pittsburgh looks more like there's been a war than, um, East Germany does. And East Germany actually had a war. Um. And, you know, I think we're all familiar with the reasons why that happened in the city. We all have to understand. Um, but that was very striking to me as well. And I just couldn't leave until I could come to terms with these, these, these consequences of, of the way that we live, you know, modern industrial capitalism. Um, I, I thought, you know, I don't like it. I don't like looking at strip lines. I don't like looking at devastated neighborhoods. But I can't, I can't leave until I can come to terms with this. Um, you know, I have as much responsibility for anybody to, to, to deal with this. Um, so, and I also like Pittsburgh and like Pittsburgh spirits and the things that are possible to do here and the people that are here, um, the spirit of the people. So, I stayed. Um, and then when a couple, you know, a couple years ago when this Marcellus thing starts coming down the pipe, haha. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, I'm really pretty well prepared to understand this and help with this, understand what this is and, and help with this um, as, it, as, it, as it develops, because it's, it's really incredibly destructive. Um, 
it sucks not just this natural gas out, but it sucks a lot of poison out of the earth and puts it into our environment and um, into the lungs and bodies of people who live near it. Um, and um, the reason I brought it tonight as an example of why we occupy is because the government completely threw open the doors to these companies to come and do this. And I mean, it was a democratic governor, everything. And it's no stops, nothing. Uh, you know, Department of Environmental Protection, nothing. Like, I mean, I, you know, through my job, I have something of a, you know, inside perspective on what the government does about these things. Like, you know, I, I work with a pseudo state function. Um, we work with the environmental agencies a lot. Um, it's just like they're spinning their wheels. They have no power. They're not doing anything. And this is ongoing. And it's happening again after they're buying, after <coughs> the original round of natural gas wells that haven't been cleaned up and are still polluting groundwater in a lot of places. And, and um, you know, so that's why I brought my solar shale. That's the reason. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I've talked to a lot of people who are like, this is really happening here. I'm not sure I can live here. You know, I'm not sure I can live under the cloud of toxic pollution that is probably going to happen in the process of this. They dumped it into our rivers, our drinking water, for two years. That was legal. They did it. Who knows where it's going? It's causing earthquakes in the Bible. Anyway, um, I could talk about that for a long time, but there it is. Oh, one more thing. So, so, <laughs> so something to me that's really exciting, and I'm glad that I kind of went in this part of the struggle, is that for me, this is one of the first times that um, we're really in a struggle where, like, Man, we're getting later. all of these people with these different concerns and different approaches are talking to each other. And to me, that's really important because it's the only way that we're going to win. You know, in, in following people, you know, different struggles around resource extraction, like, very often, those people are very long. Um, you know, people dealing with normal mining, dealing with local strip mining issues, dealing with water pollution in their community. They're alone, and other people, you know, they get really tired and they get burned out, and sometimes they move on their track. And, um, and, you know, just to see the power of people with all these different issues coming together is, is kind of giving me hope on that front for the first time. Um, you know, and it just seemed for so long that it was so hard to get anywhere with these fights. Um, and, and just, um, you know, the, this very simple metaphor of like 99 and 1, like that's as simple as it is. And um, so that's cool. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I have to interrupt, but the brother standing at the pole was just standing outside. And he said, I'm just glad to see you all are still here. I said, well, well, I told him what we're doing. I told him he's welcome. Really enjoyed us. So, welcome. Well, you want to have a seat? Yeah, sure. Join us. Just telling stories about why we're involved with Occupy. I'm glad to see the uh, the group, and I think it's a good thing. Thanks. Thanks. I need people to be aware of so many things. Thanks.